Hey everyone, today we're going on a deep dive into the world of the Baconian cipher. What's really fascinating is that this code was created way back in 1605 by Sir Francis Bacon. Bacon designed this cipher to blend right into normal text. He could use different fonts, capital letters, or even bold and italic text to disguise the code. With a little practice, you'll be deciphering messages in no time. Let's start with step one, group. What's that all about? You want to put all the A's and B's together in groups of five. That's our foundation for cracking the code. Got it. We're dividing the message into chunks of five. And what about step two, map? Now this is where things get a bit more challenging. Sometimes the code doesn't use just plain A's and B's. Look for patterns or different fonts used. Are there uppercase and lowercase letters mixed in? Once you spot the pattern, you can map it back to the A's and B's. Once we have our groups figured out and we've cracked the A and B mapping, we're ready for the exciting part. Step three, decode. You will have a special tool to help you, a Baconian cipher key. Think of it as your code cracking cheat sheet. Awesome, and I bet the last step reconstruct is where we put it all together. You got it. You take all the decoded letters you found and arrange them in order. Just like that, you've revealed the hidden message. To make sure we've got this down pat, let's try a simple example together, ready to put our new skills to the test. Absolutely. Okay, so let's say we have a secret message that's already been organized into groups of five. Our mission is to figure out what each group represents using our trusty Baconian cipher key. Looking at your cipher key, what letter does that first group of A's and B's represent? Okay, so according to the key, group one translates to the letter B. Perfect. Now let's move on to group two. What letter does that group decode to? All right, group two stands for the letter R, and group three gives us the letter E. Mm -hmm. Group four represents A. Group five decodes to K. It's like solving a puzzle one piece at a time. You're on a roll, keep going, we're almost there. Okay, group six is the letter F, Group seven gives us another. Group eight translates to S. And finally, group nine gives us T. We have B-R-E-A-K-F-A-S-T. Putting those all together, we get breakfast. You did it. See, I told you it was like magic. This is so cool. Now that we've mastered the basics, are you ready to tackle a code with a few more twists and turns? Okay, code breakers, get ready for a real brain teaser. This time, the secret message looks like this. It's a bit more complex than our breakfast code, but we'll crack it together step by step. So first up is group, but it looks like the message is already divided into those neat groups of five for us. Excellent observation. You're thinking like a true code breaker. Now comes the tricky part. What do you notice about this message? We've got the whole word bacon repeated over and over, but the capitalization is all over the place. Could that be our clue? You're on the right track. The capitalization is most likely how the A's and B's are being disguised. How do we know which path to follow? We'll test each option on the first group of letters, bacon, and see what we get. Let's start with option one, uppercase letters for A, and lowercase letters for B. With option one, bacon decodes to the letter P. Interesting. Now let's try option two, uppercase for B, and lowercase for A. In this case, bacon decodes to the letter S. Hmm. So both options give us valid letters according to our Baconian cipher key. How do we choose the right one? Don't worry, we're not lost yet. This is where the real detective work begins. Let's move on to the second group of letters. See if we can eliminate one of our options. With option one, bacon decodes to the letter A. And with option two, uppercase for B and lowercase for A. Now this is where it gets interesting. With option two, the combination for bacon doesn't match any letter on our Baconian cipher key. Uh-huh, so option two is a dead end. The correct mapping must be option one, uppercase letters for A and lowercase letters for B. Precisely. So now that we know uppercase is A and lowercase is B, let's decode the rest of the groups. What letter does group three bacon give us? Bacon decodes to the letter N. Okay, got it, N. Group four bacon decodes to C. That's right, keep going, you're doing great. Amazing work, you've successfully decoded all the groups in our message. P-A-N-C-A-K-E-S. Putting those all together we get. Pancakes. You've done it again. Another Baconian cipher conquered. I'm ready to take my code breaking skills to the next level. One tip is to try both options quickly when you're not sure which pattern to use. Instead of wasting time trying to guess, just decode a couple of groups using both options. If you end up with a bunch of letters that don't make any real words, then you know that option is probably wrong. Right. Another good trick is to work with a friend. One person can focus on figuring out the A and B pattern while the other person can decode the letters using the key. Ooh, that's a great idea. Like a code-breaking assembly line. Exactly. And the most important tip is to practice. Practice makes perfect, right? It applies to code-breaking, too. The more you practice the Baconian cipher, the faster and more accurate you'll become.
Well, this has been an incredible journey into the world of the Baconian cipher. And to everyone listening, keep those minds sharp. Until next time, stay curious.